Okay, I swear I'm gonna try to look at the camera more this time. <laughs> so you're driving down the road one night, minding your own business, when something catches your eye. A street light, glowing purple. Not the usual amber, soft white, purple. Bright, kind of beautiful, and definitely weird. If this was just one light, maybe you'd chalk it up to a fluke, but then you see another, and another, and then a whole road lit like a cyberpunk dream. So what gives? Well, in today's video, we're getting to the bottom of this bizarre phenomenon. Why are some streetlights turning purple? Is it a glitch? A feature? A failed experiment? And is there anything we're supposed to do about it? Or are we just living in the age of violet illumination? All right, first off, no, the purple streetlights aren't part of some citywide art installation, as cool as that would be. What you're seeing is a mistake, a malfunction. Most white LED streetlights are made using blue LED chips coated in a layer of yellow phosphor. That phosphor blends with the blue to create the appearance of white light. Think of it like sunglasses for the LED, filtering out the harshness and balancing out the color. But over time or due to manufacturing defects, that phosphor can start to degrade or worse, it can completely delaminate, basically peel off, exposing the raw blue or violet light underneath. And suddenly your once bright white street light looks like it's ready for a rave. So no, the purple isn't intentional. It's a sign that something inside the fixture has gone wrong. The light isn't broken in the sense that it won't turn on, but it's definitely no longer doing what it was designed to do. It's kind of like if the frosting on your cake just fell off. Still a cake, but weird. In more technical terms, this is called phosphor delamination. When the protective layer separating the blue LED core from the outside environment begins to fail. It's a known risk in LED design, especially for outdoor fixtures exposed to heat, UV radiation, and moisture cycles over years of operation. Ironically, the better the heat sink design, the longer the diode survives and the more time it has to develop visible defects. So in some cases, the light failing color-wise is actually proof that the core LED is still going strong. So why are we seeing this now? Why are so many purple streetlights showing up all of a sudden, especially in places like North Carolina, Wisconsin, Illinois, and parts of Canada? Well, it turns out that many of the defective lights trace back to a specific manufacturing period, mainly between 2017 and 2019. Fixtures from brands like Acuity Brands and others were shipped out to cities across North America. At first, they worked fine, but over time, after thousands of hours of use, the phosphor layers started to fail. The reason they're showing up in clusters is because cities often replace streetlights in bulk. So if a city installed 3,000 new fixtures from the same batch in one year, guess what? They're all gonna start failing at around the same time. That's why you'll see one street totally normal and another one just blocks away, glowing in shades of lavender like a synthwave album cover. And because many cities don't replace individual lights unless they go fully dark, these defective but still functional purple lights get to stay up. They light the street just fine, they're not technically out, and they don't pose a direct danger, but visually, they absolutely stand out. Especially when they're surrounded by properly functioning white LEDs. It's kind of like someone stuck a black light in the middle of your neighborhood. Here's a good question though. Could this happen again? The short answer is yes, but probably not in the exact same way. Manufacturers have since identified the failure mode and updated their designs to prevent it. That includes better adhesion of the phosphor layer, improved UV stabilization, and tougher coating materials. But LEDs are still evolving. As more cities adopt newer models with tunable color temperatures, remote diagnostics, and integrated sensors, the possibility for weird bugs and unforeseen issues increases. It's the price of progress. Sometimes the thing that's supposed to be long lasting and maintenance free becomes, well, kind of a mystery for a few years. So purple streetlights aren't just some internet myth. They've shown up in real cities across North America. Raleigh, North Carolina was one of the first cities to deal with a large batch of purple lights. Kenosha, Wisconsin reported dozens of them failing around the same time. Lakeland, Florida, same story. Even parts of the New Jersey Turnpike got a lavender glow up. These cities didn't all use the same vendors, but many got their fixtures from the same manufacturers and from the same manufacturing period. And when those units failed, they failed in the same flashy, fluorescent way. What started as a trickle became a recognizable pattern, and now purple streetlights have almost become a subculture. So here's a logical next question. Is it dangerous? Should we be worried about these lights in terms of safety, health, or visibility? The good news is no, there's no evidence that the purple lights themselves are harmful. You're not getting fried with UV radiation or exposed to anything toxic. 
What's happening is purely a color shift caused by degraded phosphor coating. That said, purple or blue rich light can be a little less ideal for night visibility. The high color temperature can reduce contrast, make it harder to judge distances, and suppress melatonin if you're walking under them before bed. They're not dangerous, but they are suboptimal. You probably wouldn't want every streetlight in your neighborhood glowing purple indefinitely. Especially if you're trying to sleep and that light is bouncing right through your window. It also opens up an interesting legal question. What if a city leaves these up too long and someone claims poor visibility caused a crash or an injury? Probably rare, but not impossible. And I'm also not a lawyer, so legal legal? So are the cities fixing these lights? The answer is yes, but it's a slow process. In many cases, the faulty lights are still under warranty, so cities are working with manufacturers to identify the defective fixtures and get them replaced. This is happening in places like Raleigh, North Carolina, Madison, Wisconsin, Calgary, Alberta, and dozens of other cities across North America. But streetlights aren't exactly easy to track on an individual basis unless residents report them or unless a city has smart lighting infrastructure to detect color shifts. Many purple lights go unnoticed until someone finally says something. Some cities are actually encouraging residents to report them, and others are just replacing them on a rotating schedule. Either way, it's going to take time, and with tens of thousands of lights per city, you do the math. Fun fact, in some cities, repair crews are getting so many calls about purple lights, they've had to create internal tracking maps just to log which ones are still glowing purple. So that means there's a lot out there. But here's a plot twist. Not everyone wants them gone. A surprising number of people actually love the purple glow. You'll find entire Reddit threads, Instagram pages, and TikToks dedicated to tracking purple streetlights. Some people think they look cooler, feel safer, or give the city a futuristic vibe. Others just love the aesthetic. Some photographers say the lights give them incredible nighttime shots with just the right amount of weirdness. Others associate the color with calm or nostalgia, like a neon memory from a late night drive, and honestly, it's not hard to see why. There's something kind of magical about a row of purple streetlights reflecting off wet pavement. It's different, unexpected, and kind of beautiful. Some residents have even asked cities to keep a few as public art, which brings up a funny question. What happens when a defect becomes a feature? Here's a thought experiment. What if purple streetlights weren't a mistake? What if some cities decided to use them on purpose? We already know that some parking garages use blue light to deter drug use, some bridges and public monuments use colored light for design. So what if neighborhoods, entertainment districts, or even parks experimented with different colors for ambiance? It's probably not practical for every street, but in the right context with proper optics and color calibration, it might actually make sense. Imagine a city zone where the lighting is designed to feel chill on purpose. The line between failure and innovation is often just how you spin it. This whole situation is a perfect reminder that even well-tested infrastructure can have bugs. LEDs were supposed to be the long-lasting, low-maintenance future of lighting, and for the most part, they are. But manufacturing defects still happen. It also shows how interconnected infrastructure really is. When something fails, even a phosphor layer, it affects everyone who walks or drives past that light. And finally, it's a good example of how communities respond to the unexpected. Some complain, some celebrate, and some just pull out their phones and take pictures. Maybe it's a little ironic, but the same people who once criticized the harsh glare of early LEDs are now admiring the soft glow of a glitch. So that's what's up with purple streetlights. It's not the future of lighting, it's not a design trend, it's just a failure, but a weirdly captivating one. So next time you see one, you can say with confidence, ah yes, that's a classic phosphor delamination issue from a 2018 municipal batch install. Then enjoy the confused looks from your friends and everyone within a half mile radius. Have you seen purple streetlights in your city? Drop your city name in the comments if you have. I'd love to make a follow-up video about where these things are showing up because I haven't seen that many myself personally. And if you want more in-depth explainers like this, hit that subscribe button. I've got more lighting tech videos on the way. You see this pedestrian signal behind me? It's not on right now, but there will be a video about that and traffic lights. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Stay bright, but not violet. Most white LED streetlights are made using blue LED chips coated in a yellow, damn it, layer of yellow phosphor. Jesus Christ. All right, first off, no, the purple streetlights aren't some of, par fuck. <laughs> What's up with purple streetlights? Basically peel off, exposing the raw blue or violet light underneath. Damn it, damn it, bitch. The light, the, 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 the light, the, they, oh, Jesus Christ, I can't read. And the high color temperature can reduce contrast, make it harder to judge distances. The high color temperature can reduce contrast, make it harder to judge, 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 judge Judy. It makes it harder to judge Judy.